Hello, good morning everyone. My name is Larry and today I'll be discussing on how to achieve competitive advantage with information systems. So our learning objectives would give us a basic understanding on the Porter's competitive forces model. I believe you are familiar with this one already. Michael Porter is a very popular author of competitive strategy. We also understand the value chain and the value web models in identifying opportunities for strategic information system applications. We also discuss an IS and how it helps in business businesses in the use of synergies, core competitors, and network-based strategies. Another one is we identify competitive competencies on a global scale to achieve competitive advantage as well. And we evaluate the role of business process management in enhancing competitiveness. Let me ask you this. What were the best digital strategy for this company created in the last 10 to 15 years? In the case of Apple, probably the iPhone, right? In the case of Google, Google has a lot of products in the past 10 to 15 years. Many uh, were successful and the others will, were also not successful. Facebook is also made their own digital strategy towards managing content you know data privacy they have enhanced the experience in the using the social media and of course Microsoft I believe they have also created their own digital strategy although it's unfortunate that the Windows mobile uh, platform was not a hit for for the company so the no the purchase of Nokia was also it was actually a good plan but they were not able to cap cap capitalize on it so what is this uh, competitive advantage to you I would like to ask you first about what is competitive advantage to you maybe not on the aspect yet of an organization but as an individual I believe you have you may have thought of, you know, competition, perhaps. Sure thing. Or maybe being ahead of your classmates. Yeah, could be. Or being efficient and more productive than others. Yes. So all those are a part of it, basically. But who coined this term? I think that uh, this term has been existent uh, long before. But one of the most promising personalities in the history is Michael Porter. Michael is one of the leading authority when it comes to competitive strategy and many others. He's not only a professor but also an author of several books uh, primarily on co uh, competitive strategy and you know what the he's able to capture the very basic you know idea of how to be competitive thus making the company uh, effectively and competitively able to strive and be on the top so I would suggest you read also uh, one of his books next <clears throat> so we now go to uh, using IS to achieve competitive advantage. So the forces competitive, uh, Porter rather, Porter's competitive forces model gave us the five competitive forces that shape the fate of a firm. So if you're a new business, you remember you have to consider your environment, whether it's a good business to go in or not. And this is basically how to stay or how to become competitive. First one is you look at the traditional competitors. So if you are into retail, you have a lot of competitors. So you continuously devise new products, new efficiencies, some switching costs. That's the way to do it. Then while you're in the competition, there are new market entrants. So some industries have low barriers to entry. Just imagine food industry versus microchip industry. 
So where would you want to go first? Or where, which one would you want to go? If you have plenty of money, then I think you could go for microchip industry. But for the food industry, it has little capital for, for you to enter. Newer companies may have advantages because they have newer equipment, younger workforce, and so on. So these are some of the considerations if you are new uh, for the new market entrance. Using information systems also, uh, <clears throat> I mean, in the competitive forces model, we have also what we call substitute products and services. So substitutes customers can purchase if your prices is too high like your internet music service versus CDs. Unfortunately, we now have streaming. So basically, it changes from time to time. So you need to keep up with the evolution. It's not just evolution, it's a revolution. It has revolutionized how we understand or uh, get content online. Customers, yes, customers easily switch to competitors' products. Between Samsung and Apple, that's, that's a head-to-head -head competition. In the Philippines, we have head-to-head -head competition for Globe and PLDT as the telecom provider. So customers can force firm and competitors to compete on price alone. So there must be a transparency in, this, in the marketplace in order for them to be able to achieve more customers. Then you have suppliers. The more suppliers a firm has, the greater control it can exercise over suppliers. So you can always switch between one supplier to another. Next, in here, uh, the competitive forces model is the strategic position of the firm and its strategies are determined not only by competition with its traditional direct competitors, but also by the four forces in the industry's environment. So you have your new market entrants, substitute products, customers, and suppliers. Then we also align uh, <clears throat> information system strategies. Uh, we also deal with this uh, in terms of the competitive forces. So how do you basically compete? So one, for example, one advantage is being able to put up an information system. And your basic strategy, first is to align IT with your business objectives. So 75% of businesses fail to align their IT with their business objectives, leading to lower profitability. Now, in order for you to align your IT, you need to identify business goals and strategies. Okay. Strate break strategic goals into concrete activities and processes. Third, you identify metrics for measuring progress. And I think this is a better way to do it. And you also determine how can IT help achieve business goals. Another one is you measure actual performance. So these things are just one of the many that you could do. The next would be low cost leadership. So in low cost leadership, you use information to achieve the lowest operational cost and the lowest prices. In the case of Walmart, inventory replenishment system sends orders to suppliers when purchase recorded at cash register. So it minimizes inventory at warehouses, thus reducing your operating costs. So there's an efficient customer response system. Next would be your product differentiation. So and focus also on market niche. So in this case, supermarkets and large retail stores such as Walmart use sales data to capture at the checkout counter to determine which items have sold and need to be reordered. So Walmart's continuous replenishment system transmits orders to restock directly to its suppliers. The system enables Walmart to keep costs low while fine-tuning its merchandise to meet customer demands. Isn't that amazing? So that is just one strategy where it's not only Walmart can implement it, but any other 
store that has similar business with Walmart as well. Then we have this IS strategies for dealing with competitive uh, forces. Uh, we want to strengthen customer and supplier intimacy. You know, if you have your <coughs> strong linkages to customers and suppliers, it increases your switching costs and loyalty. Yeah, Toyota uses IS to facilitate direct access from suppliers to production schedules. So basically, it permits suppliers to decide how and when to ship suppliers to Chrysler factories, allowing more lead time in producing goods. For Amazon, they keep tracks of user preferences for purchases and recommends titles purchased by others. It's, all of these things are just basically being utilized. They're being, the information system plays a very, very important role. Some companies pursue several strategies at the same time. Let's say, for example, in the case of Dell, they emphasize low cost plus customization of product. So they are able to successfully use IS to achieve competitive advantage, which requires precise coordination of technology, organization, and people. So you cannot deny the fact that your IS would just be left like any other if there is no precise coordination of technology, organizations, and people. So you have to consider those things. And you cannot deny the fact that today, information management is reliant on different information systems. What about the Internet's impact on competitive advantage? I believe many of you has experienced this on a personal level. The internet has created tremendous change, not only for us as an individual, for organizations as well. It enables new products and services. It transforms industries. It increases bargaining power of customers and suppliers. So you have the power as a customer to choose which one, which product. You have a lot of choices nowadays. But it also identifies competitive rivalry. At the same time, create opportunities for building brands and large customer bases. So this impact are, in, are already happening, not only to us, but for the entire world. For existing competitors, so they, are, they need to widen the market in order to capture more sales, increasing competitors, reducing differences, pressure to compete in price. That's basically how these organizations would compete head to head with each other. For new entrants, uh, it reduces barriers to entry. So the need for sales force declines and utilizes technology to drive business processes. Then we have also that what we call the substitute products and services. You facilitate creation of new products and services. So uh, when the arrival of smartphones, we have expect expensive ones, but then China made products became a hit because they all do the same process, the same capability, at a lower cost. So they considered it as, an, as a substitute for the high-end ones. Customers' bargaining power, your bargaining power ships to customer. Nowadays, the customer has a choice. That's why you have to work on capturing those customers. Another one is suppliers bargaining power. So procurement over internet raises power over suppliers. Suppliers can benefit from reduced buyer barriers to entry and elimination of intermediaries. So as a supplier, you don't need any more the middleman. The distribution can be direct from business to business. So it also saves you some costs. Thus, you can lower your prices in order to be more competitive.
Then we proceed to business value chain model. So the value chain model highlights specific activities in a business where competitive strat strategies can best be applied and where information systems are likely to have a, a strategic impact. I believe you're all familiar with this uh, value chain model. So you have your primary activities, support activities, benchmarking, and breast practice. So this is the value chain model. You can see there you have your uh, different activities, your primary ones, and you have your support activities. So this figure provides examples of systems for both the primary and the support activities of a firm and of its value partners that would add a margin of value to a firm's products or service. So your value chain should not only be limited or basically it captures all the activities within a firm. And all of this must be what we call well-coordinated in order for you to achieve maximum value for the organization. So supplier, suppliers, suppliers, firm, distributors, customers. And if you notice here, a lot of systems are in place. It is not only limited to just one system. And that's the challenge for big companies to make these systems well coordinated with each other. So you have your primary activities, your inbound logistics, operations, sales and marketing, service and outbound logistics. All of those together creates the firm value chain. So extending the value, <clears throat> the value chain to the value web. So a firm's value chain is linked to the value chains of its suppliers, distributors, and customers. At the same time, a value web is also a collection of independent firms that use IT to coordinate their value chains to provide or to produce rather a product collectively. And then we have the value webs, which are, we make it flexible in order for it to adapt to changes. As you can see, the business environment uh, nowadays changes a lot. If you notice in the past or recently, we have shifted from just to e-commerce website to mobile apps, where you can purchase the items by just using your mobile phone. So for if you're an e-commerce website, you need to build that app in order for you to stay competitive. Then we have what we call using information systems to achieve the competitive advantage through the value web. So this is just to illustrate to you how the value web is basically a network system that can synchronize with each other the value chains of business partners within an industry in order for it to respond rapidly to changes in supply and demand. So you can see there how those systems and those partners coordinate with each other. And that's the best way to do it. Although for smaller organizations, it could be streamlined though. Because a full implementation of this one is also very costly. So probably you start small, but still the system is very coordinated within the organization. So that it would also be much manageable. Then what we have, what we call is the synergies. When output of some units can be used as inputs to other units. So there's a well, a proper coordination in terms of how the different units would interact with each other and, and work together. So when two firms can pool markets and expertise, okay, just like banks who are merging together they can capture a wider market and probably increase gain more income or sales increase revenue in the long run and since they have pooled their resources together they can lower the costs and generate more profit thus it is enabled i mean information system must be enabled on this part so 
their information systems must be tied together so that they could act as a whole. And I think it's a good way to go. That's for synergy. Then we have what we call core competency. So activities for which firm for which firm is world class leader, world's best miniature part designer, best package delivery service, you come up with something so unique that you are the ones who excel on that particular service or product. And in the logistics industry, I think you know you have DHL, FedEx, UPS, they are all working. I would not say they're working, they're competing with each other. Okay. And that's their core service. They deliver the package, the best package delivery service. Relies on knowledge that is gained over many years of experience as well as knowledge research. For so long, you have, a, you have been able to establish a name in that particular field. And you continuously improve your core competency that you are already the the leader in that part. Then we have your IS, uh, your information system, which encourages the sharing of knowledge across business units to enhance competency. So in the case here, as an example, Procter & Gamble uses internet to help people working on similar problems share ideas and expertise. Today, a lot of enterprise collaboration systems are on the rise. Uh, even social media is being used as a collaboration tool just for them to coordinate with each other, their efforts. Your Outlook, SharePoint from Microsoft, uh, a lot of these tools have made them much more competitive because they are able to share ideas all together. And then we have what we call network-based strategies. In this, we have two, network economics and virtual company. For network economics, marginal costs of adding another part participant are near zero, whereas marginal gain is much larger. So large number of participants in the internet leads to greater value to all participants. So you're trying to utilize uh, the large number of participants that are being pulled together because in that way you can have uh, higher chances of earning more sales. And then we have the virtual company which uses networks to link people, resources, and ally with other companies to create and distribute products. And this is without traditional organizational boundaries or physical locations. And this is amazing. Today, you have virtual companies that are created uh, in the retail side. They have what we call the drop shipping. Uh, a lot has changed, basically. Uh, Amazon, perhaps. Uh, there are other similar strategies that are being deployed in the retail industry, which made them uh, all regular individuals. Uh, I mean, regular people being uh, deploying uh, companies and they're able to do and earn profit from it. It's just a link of people. But then once they go work together, they're able to distribute products through the internet. And that is such a unique way of building your own business. Next, we have what we call the disruptive technologies. So the internet, the, the big companies has always created a lot, but it's not always the big companies who made the disruptive technologies. There are also startup companies who created uh, wonderful ideas and you know, they are able to capitalize on it. So disruptive technologies with disruptive impact on industries. So like your Uber, okay, Airbnb, those companies have created disruptive technologies and we are riding on it. 
Okay, so personal computers, World of Web, Internet Music Services, they have changed in the past five years or so. So we have also the first movers versus the fast followers. First movers of disruptive technology may fail to see potential, allowing second movers to reap rewards. So at some point, yes, this is true. There are those startups who are not able to capitalize at the very start. But then they have followers who have found a solution of what those barriers that they have encountered being the first mover and they're able to find a solution to it because they are the ones who are reaping the rewards. And that is just wonderful. Next is, you know, the internet is already a glo on a global scale. We cannot deny the fact. But prior to the internet, competing globally was only an option for your huge companies. Being able to send products abroad was costly for many. But this internet e-commerce have drastically changed it. They introduced cost of operating globally. So if you are Amazon, you can purchase products from Amazon and deliver it to whoever, which country you are from. So the globalization benefits has lead to scale economies and resource cost reduction. There's also higher utilization of rates, fixed capital costs, and lower costs per unit of production. And there's what you call the speeding time to market. So there are those that are able to capture orders from customers and build it them. The process of manufacturing the product and bringing it to the market has significantly reduced as well. So in here, uh, I found this online and although it has, it's not so clear, but you know, the iPhone has different parts and they are being designed in the US assembled in China, but the component parts of the iPhone are coming from different organizations from different countries. And yeah, this is how we can imagine it. And it's something is, well, it's not so clear in here, but before an, an iPhone product goes to the market, it goes through a series of processes. And that is also how other technologies are brought to market. Only in the case of iPhone, they have, I believe, a much more sophisticated way of dealing with it because they are very sec secretive in terms of how they, uh, they produce their product. So, but at some point, uh, they are regarded as, you know, very, uh, they have produced uh, such a wonderful product. Next would be the global business and the system strategies. Many uh, uh, competing on a global scale has led to a lot of changes in the global business. Domestic exports, uh, heavy centralization of corporate activities in home country. I would consider China here as the nowadays the leading manufacturer of products. And you say products is not just electronic products, but almost all products from individual products, toys, kitchen, kitchen wares, so many products. We have multinationals. Uh, it concentrates on financial management and central home base while decentralizing production, sales, and marketing to other countries. We have also the franchisers. So nowadays, franchising a brand to your home country is much easier compared to compared before. You have also transnationals, uh, regional, uh, not national headquarters, but perhaps world headquarters. It optimizes resources as needed. So these are some of the basic uh, system strategies that they have deployed in order to be more competitive in a global business. They have also deployed some global system configurations, yeah, centralized systems. So in that case, all development and operation at domestic home base. 
Then duplicated systems, development at home, based but operations managed by autonomous units in foreign locations. Decentralized and network systems. All of these systems made a global impact depending on the nature of the organization. In here, the strategy of system configuration would uh, look at it in a different, uh, should I say, the large axis here showed uh, dominant patterns and the small axis showed the uh, emerging patterns. But there is, uh, I mean, for example, uh, domestic exporters rely predominantly on centralized systems. But there is a continual pressure and some development of decentralized systems in local marketing regions. You see that? So these strategies have made them profitable in some way. So you just have to find out what would be the best strategy for your organization. Next, competing on a global scale. And how do you promote quality and design? That's one of the biggest challenge to compete with iPhone you need to have a product of good quality and design on the producer perspective conformance to specifications and absence of variation from specs that's one so customer perspective you're after a physical quality you want to make sure that this product is reliable the quality of service and, and some sort of psychological quality your TQM or total quality management. So quality control in is N in itself. So all people functions responsible for quality. So six, sim, six sigma E measure of quality. So there are 3.4 million defects per million opportunities. Uh, that's a ratio in order uh, for six sigma. If you implement six sigma, so. If you have implemented this one, the opportunities, that's how you measure quality to the number of defects out of the many products that you have created. Next, how do information systems improve quality? Many, reduce cycle time and simplify production process, ben <laughs> sorry, benchmarking, use customer demands to improve products and services. You know, feedback from customers are one of the ways to improve products and service, and that's very important. Improve quality design, uh, design quality and precision using computer-aided design systems. You improve production precision and tighten production tolerances. So here, uh, uh, this guy is using a CAD systems to improve quality and precision of product design by performing much of the design and testing work on the computer. Then we go to competing on business processes. So business are collections of businesses are collections of business processes, ways of working and getting things done. Sometimes they are written in manuals, but in many cases, businesses processes are informal. So in order to use information systems effectively, you need to change business processes and one of way one way to go with it or one way to do it is you need to change people's attitude and behaviors so no you know in organizations especially the traditional ones they are always resistant to change and that's the problem in order for you to be able to improve business processes the mentality of your people must change their attitude must change and of course, the organization itself. So if you can turn that back around and they embrace the change, I think it's good for the organization. Then the business process management. This is a continuous improvement in terms of how we develop or improve processes within the organization. So first you identify processes for change. If you think they are, this process is not that efficient, you analyze existing processes to see whether they are still uh, very effective or not. Then you also design new process, you implement this one and a new measure. 
For example, in improving your business process in here, uh, what do you call this? Uh, this is actually a bookstore. So if it's a library or it's a, yeah, you want to to simplify the process in how you're able to uh, buy a book from a bookstore. So go to bookstore, search shelves, book available, and so on and so forth. So on the other hand, the lower part, it gives you uh, a way for for improving the process. So basically, it, it tells you, I mean, this process is uh, it's giving you idea that this is how is the process of buying a book in a bookstore and from it you can if you can improve on it then much better if you can simplify some things much better so <clears throat> if uh, you try to provide opportunities online so you have an online bookstore and this is a way to do it. Make things much easier. Then we now go to business process re-engineering. Some say this is a radical form of fast change, but you know what? This is something that is uh, very useful for organizations. It is not a continuous improvement, but elimination of old processes. You know, you're trying to replace them with new processes in a brief time period. And it can produce dramatic gains in productivity. But it increases organizational resistance to change. But nevertheless, it we are moving, it leads the company to move forward. So in summary, uh, Porter's competitive forces help companies develop competitive strategies using information systems. We know for a fact that by understanding though that model of him you are able to visualize how you are going to prepare yourself if you are a new entrant to the business. And with value chain and the value web models, it could also help your organization identify opportunities for strategic information systems. And IS, which help businesses. So you have your system already in place. It needs to be well coordinated. Okay, you concentrate on your core competencies and network-based strategies. You network in order for you to be able to attract probably saving costs towards your suppliers and you have a large uh, customer base and lastly this competition now is, on a is, is already on a global scale and promoting quality thus enhances your competitive advantage business process management or bpm also enhances competitiveness so that's the way to go there's always a continuous process improvement from time to time within your organization. So I hope you're able to gain something out of this presentation that I have. And hopefully we would be able to learn more. I'll be uploading more videos in terms of information systems and information management. Thank you so much for listening and don't forget to subscribe. Thank you.